Welcome to Kala 2020, Sunday, August 23rd, the third day of the conference. Uh, I'm very happy to be here. I'm Helene Granqvist, the president of Women in Film and Television International, and also the director of Kala 2020. Last year, I had the privilege to be the mentor uh, in Tunisia in a program called Sisters in Film, where I met this women you soon gonna listen to, uh, Sisters in Film from the MENA region. I'm happy to introduce you to Rije Siri uh, from Tunisia, uh, who is here today with me. Hi. Hi, hello. Thank you, Ellen, for having us, and thank you for everybody. Hi. How is it in Tunisia today? Um, sorry, Helen, what did you say? How is it in Tunisia today? Oh, it's great. It's great. It's hot, but it's, it's, uh, we're working. I'm currently shooting a film, <laughs> so, so things are getting better. I'm happy to hear. Is it still closed down? Uh, no, no, it's not closed down, but we have like a, the second wave, you know? So, uh, like, yeah. yeah, it's like, we really don't know what's, what's going to happen. So it's day by day. Yeah. I, I wanted you to, to, to give the history of Sisters in Film, who you are and how it happened uh, from your perspective. Yeah. Would you like to share yeah. it? Yes, of course. Well, the, the collective was uh, created uh, after um, imaging uh, filmmakers um, participated a year ago, and you know that you were part of it, uh, Ellen, at the UNESCO program. It's a regional program for MET Films. It was a partnership with other organizations for Morocco and Tunisia. And we've met with the filmmakers from North Africa and the Middle East. And we've noticed that often women filmmakers of the region don't make it to their second or third film. And so we were sharing, sharing also that our experiences and our challenges. challenges. And we, we find out that we have so much in common uh, related also to the challenges of social pressure, but also money issues and having kids and uh, how to manage family and uh, a career in, in cinema. So uh, it's exactly where, as a collective, we offer support. So, so sister, Sisters in Film, it's a sisterhood, let's say, and uh, it's a safe place uh, to talk, to uh, work on professional development, to share information. It could be about producers, distributors, but also about contracts or author rights, anything that is uh, helpful for us to support each other. So um, we also uh, want to um, create partnerships, but also facilitate uh, access to existing uh, writing residencies for the, for the members, trainings and workshops. Uh, I mean, for us, uh, it's not just a hobby to make films. It's, it's, we're really passionate about it, but it's, we really want it to be a sustainable career. So this is where uh, the collective Sisters in Film comes to, to support each other. And of course, we, we want to uh, work on art development and censorship a lot uh, by getting together and uh, um, depending on the situation of our countries, uh, of course, and gender equality. We are a discussion, example, women characters in our films um, a lot. So um, yeah, so the idea of the collective is really chat to, to work on stereotype and disruptive narratives and also um, anything, let's say, that could be um, um, useful for women filmmakers to empower in the region. So that's basically the, how the collective was created and why we, we, we want to come together. Which countries are, are involved in, in, in the collective for, for the moment? Well, for now, we have uh, Tunisia, Libya, Algeria, Jordan, uh, Palestine, Lebanon, uh, uh, hopefully, yeah, Morocco. Um, yeah, so that's our country now. I hope I don't forget anyone. But e e e Egypt. And Egypt, yes, and Egypt, yes. Egypt, yes. yes. Yeah, yeah. Right. It's, it's, it's seven, seven countries involved. Uh, for me, being a Scandinavian, uh, I, 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 luckily, I have the idea that I think filmmakers are the same all over the world. I, I work as an international coach, and I think if you're a filmmaker, even if you have different cultures, you, there's something it's, that is common that you do the impossible. You have this urge of telling a story to sh that you want to share with the world. So I think that makes it easy for us to connect globally. But it, of course, we also have cultural differences. But thinking of your these countries that are involved, 
are there, could you find that you have cultural um, similarities uh, that, that ties you together or, or, or yeah, do, do you understand my question? Yes, of course. Yeah, yes, we yeah. do. We do have similarities. I mean, we're different countries. So our political situation is very different, yeah. but still, still, it, there's a lot of sim similarity. And in terms of mentalities, example, yeah. our cultural mentalities, we're we we're, mm -hmm. we're almost the same. So, yeah. uh, with some nuances, let's say. But it's yeah. it's so, so that's why when we talk with a, a filmmaker from Egypt or from uh, Palestine or from Morocco, we have this in common that we can discuss on, on the social pressure example or, or our, our own stories or even how our stories are being said by, by the North, let's say, for example. That's also yeah. kind of a discussion we, we're having a lot, like what are the European foreign founders, let's say, or North founders are expecting from us to say? This is, uh, this is really important and we're trying to be independent on that, but also we are depending on funds so how can we be more independent? That's also part of the discussion of the collective. Mm -hmm. Before we let your sisters in, I would like to share, and I, I won't tell you who, who said it, but uh, I have a memory from, from these days in Tunisia when we had one-to-one -one meetings with you and one of your, the sisters. I remember that I asked you, what do you, what do you need to, to, to have a good um, working situation and then he said thank you for asking me that because i'm so tired of people telling me what i need uh, mm -hmm. and that was really obvious for me and i think that also goes what you what you said right now said and what i heard as well this thing that there are people that they think that they know better than you who you are and who you need and that goes for individuals but also in a way for countries you have an imagine you imagine a picture of something, of, of, of a place, and then you project that picture instead of really see it. Is that what you're talking about? Yes, yes exactly, completely. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, that's, that's exactly why, why that's why I, I talk about independence. Yes. Yeah. And, and it's also, it's something we've never thought about it really so much. Like we thought about it individually, but we never thought about it as a collective. Oh. So how we, this can be much stronger yeah. When, we, yeah. Yes, yeah. when we connect to each yeah. other, imagine if each one of us do it in our own countries. So imagine how our industry, because we don't, we have small industries in each uh, our, of our countries, but together the Arab region is very, very big. big. The whole industry, actually, when you, you put yeah. them together. And you have, I don't know if you listened to the, the previous panel, but one of the advices for the future was to, to think of the audience, and, and you have quite a huge audience. Yeah. So should we let you, the the other sisters in? And now we're gonna I'm gonna ask you a question and more about your your personal or individual experience of, of this uh, network and sisterhood. Uh, but yes, hi Danielle. Hello. Uh, and now we have someone. Hi Dina. Do we have Dorothy as well? I thought I saw, yeah, there's one person we are waiting for. We're not sure. There are some technical issues, but uh, let's start. Uh, you talked about the sisters in film, Erigi, but you didn't get... Oh, hi, Miriam. Hi. <laughs> Welcome. Uh, I would like to ask you, uh, and I give the word to you one by one, to, to give your individual and personal reflection. I also want you to introduce yourself and what you're doing in the industry. So we have a picture from which platform you, you address your individual relation to this uh, uh, sisterhood. So who would like to start? Go ahead, Miriam. <laughs> That's so funny. I was, if no one says something, I would say Miriam, and then you said it. <laughs> okay, so I'm from Beirut, Lebanon. I'm a filmmaker trying to do my second film, second and third, in fact, a fiction and a documentary. And I joined, I was like um, in, in the group of, in the first group joining the sisters in film. And the idea was very interesting for me because I was uh, not being able to do the second film. In fact, I had finished my first and then I, was, I wasn't able to do the second because I, were, I was working a lot. I had to make a living as well. So, uh, so things were not going very fast for me. 
And the idea of joining a group of women who are like all of them trying to do films uh, and helping each other and helping others as well, like in the future, being able to help other generations coming to cinema and like other women doing their first film. This was something that like uh, interested, interested me a lot. I felt that this is something like where I can be, I belong, in fact. Is there any particular thing that happened during this? You, you, I met you in Tunis, and then later on you met up in Morocco, and you also you have been in touch since then. Is there any experience you have during this little bit more than a year uh, that has been special for you, where you have learned something new, or or being mad, or 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 happy, or that's been special? Is there anything you can share? Solidarity, I think. <laughs> Like I felt that maybe it's it's because also we're not in our twenties anymore. So now we are uh, um, older, and uh, and and I felt thank that you for that. that. <laughs> thank you for that. No. <laughs> no, because it's also about uh, uh, about age. You know, like when you are twenty, you don't see things. Uh, you you are in competition still. Oh yeah. Maybe. And this is why we, this is why this group managed to be together. Also, it's because we're not in competition, and so everyone is. What is it if it's not competition? Co sorry. If it's not competition, what is it then? It's a solidarity. Like it's everyone uh, trying to do his her film. Uh, every, every every woman of us trying to do her film, but also thinking about the other woman, and wanting her to be able to do her film. You know, and this is something you don't have in mind when you are like 10 years uh, younger or like even five years younger. I don't know. It's, um, it's we, we, we are, we, I think that this is something I've learned. I've learned throughout this year uh, and, and being with these women, even, even though we're not being able to see each other, like we've been uh, uh, away from each other for the past, I don't know, six months maybe or more. Ever since uh, uh, our last uh, our last time was in, in Morocco, last time together, and then the COVID may, uh, uh, separated us. <laughs> but ever since then, we are much more together. You know, we are trying to think together to make to make things move, uh, to make this collective exist. Uh, and everyone is even if like we are we are connected all the time, asking about each and every one of us if we are trying to uh, able to do our films, if we are managing, if we are. So this solidarity is something new for me uh, because I've been in the industry for the past few years and, and the industry is very uh, macho, but it's very, uh, and, it's very uh, and it's not an, an easy place to be, very, very competitive and cruel sometimes. And it's very uh, good to feel that that today, uh, with this collective, we can be um, stronger, yeah. and and see things differently, and see cinema differently. You know, it's not about only being in the in this industry, in this cruel industry. No, we can protect each other, and this is something I I, I love. I understand that. I, I'm thinking you're talking about age. I'm, I'm not, I don't want to prove you wrong, but I'm not sure it is about age because there are people that are in my age that are very competitive. So, so I'm afraid not to be cynical. But I think it's about a decision. I encourage you to listen to the conversation Johanna Collinen had with Joe Soloway yesterday. Uh, it's online in the Carla Library now, but it, it really touched this not having a patriarchal structure is a actually about love and solidarity uh, and, and to show each other that. So, but thank you for sharing that, uh, Miriam. Who would like to continue? Yalla girl. <laughs> Yalla girl. Yalla girl. Yalla girl. <laughs> okay, Gina? No? Yeah, sure. Yalla Daniel. <laughs> yes, I'm with you. <laughs> It seems like it's going to be you, Dina. Yes. I'm listening. We are listening. The audience are listening. Uh, yeah, as, as Miriam said, it's all about solidarity and love and, and connect to each other. Um, talking about competi competition, I don't think it's, all, it's about competition at all. Even like each person, each story 
has its own unique voice and its own unique uh, uh, angle. Mm -hmm. And filmmaking, it shouldn't be about competition. It should be about giving a voice and spreading a message mm -hmm. and presenting a, a different point of view. Age is something that um, I don't feel it's, it's connected in a way. Maybe it is for some people. But I guess for us, filmmaking, maybe that's the only tool that keep us young and that charge us with energy to keep going and um, keep um, charging our battery to get involved in more creative projects and more storytelling. Dina, we, we also have to, you have to introduce yourself and tell us who you are as a filmmaker. You also have a great success this year, so I think we should brag. Yes, about yeah. I was just too involved in the, in the <laughs> point there. But yes, uh, I'm a uh, Palestinian uh, Jordanian filmmaker. Um, my name is Dina Nasser. At the moment, I, uh, I'm stuck in Amman, according to the COVID uh, situation. Um, Quite harsh in Amman, isn't it? Actually, nowadays it's getting worse. Now, for example, after having three months of lockdown, uh, we had some freedom for a few months in summer, and now we are facing another lockdown next Friday. The numbers are getting higher. I think we're facing like the second wave of, uh, uh, of the virus. So it's very challenging the situation at the moment. Everybody is struggling. Everybody trying to figure out what is tomorrow, but um, you, there's nothing you can do. You just live day by day and uh, adjust accordingly. But it's so hard to plan. It's so hard to organize something uh, because you really don't know what's going to happen next. Mm -hmm. Sorry for interrupting. You were in the middle of presenting your 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 work. No, I'm I'm almost there. Like I'm almost done. I yeah, as you said, I finished uh, my first uh, feature length documentary last year. It was released last year, and um, it was a very important success. I'm so humble about it, um, and the feedback was amazing. And now I'm actually getting- I'll Share a little bit what the story is about because I think it's an, an important subject to share, isn't it? Of course, it's a very important subject. Uh, Tiny Souls follow the story of uh, three kids living uh, in a Zatari refugee camp. They are a Syrian, they come from a Syrian family. And I followed them since like the first day I met them uh, back in 2012 and I finished two with them in 2016. So I followed their journey inside the camp and outside the camp and how they grow up and uh, live in this such a hard environment, trying to find ways to survive. But what was most beautiful and important about these kids and, and especially this family that they were dealing with this hard condition with a positive attitude and a smile. Actually, they teach me so much about how to be strong and how to really face real life with, with an attitude that you want to survive, that you want to go on, that you have to gain some power. Uh, it was very touching personal experience. I've, I'm not the same person that I, when I got into the camp and after I finished, it changed uh, a lot of things inside of me. And of course, the, the, the connection I had with this family was beautiful. And it was never for me about the film. It was about the connection that I had with this family. And the film was a result of this beautiful uh, connection, let's say. Thank you very much, Dina. Do you have anything else you would like to add about your personal experience? Or maybe you also have some memory, or there is, if there's any spot or point from, from this uh, sisterhood with, in Sisters in Film that has changed you, touched you? Uh, of course, a lot of things. I mean, as uh, the ladies mentioned, like since the first day we met uh, in the first workshop, we felt how much we share the same uh, struggle and the same uh, uh, journey in making our films. And most of us, we were reaching to a point that how can we make the second film? How can we find alternatives way in, in doing our projects without really eating us and pushing us to reach to a point, okay, I'm not gonna do this again. So having this, this connection, having this solidarity, having this love, having this knowledge that we share, it's for sure it's a boost for us to keep going and finding other ways to keep our projects alive. Otherwise, you know, it's, it's a very tough region, politically, economically, and uh, the art industry kind of dying in a way in some countries because of 
all the, 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 the disasters that we are facing. So it's very important to find this connection to keep you going, to encourage you, to support you. And this is what we lack in the industry. As a first time filmmaker or the second time, you're still trying to learn as, as you go. But once you have this hand to take you and push you to the right uh, uh, track, you will keep going. And this is the concept. This is the core of our connection. And this is what we aim to create, not only for us, but also for other filmmakers around the region, because we know that this is what they need. And we know this is what we really need to spread and, and create. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's very tough to um, make things a bit going according to the situation. And of course, according to each one of us has a project that she needs to focus, but it's our challenge to find the dedication and the time to give for this collective to keep it growing and shining mm -hmm. so it's it's we are starting it's a long journey and i believe that we will grow and blossom along the way as much as personally and uh, our projects as well fantastic thank you so now i think it's so good to go so now i pick you daniel because you're a filmmaker but you're also a visual anthropologist that is, when I heard it the first time, I must admit, I didn't really know what it is. So in, in, when I don't know it, there's maybe a lot of people that don't know it. So would you mind just give us a picture of what that is? Yeah. Okay, um, a visual anthropologist, well, uh, it's using the tool of uh, the camera and sound to um, research on our ground, on our fields. So um, it's anthropologists using a camera. It's Jean Rouge, the most known one um, that used to, um, to film and then watch his films and try to understand um, the reality that he, he, he had on camera, on tape. And there's a hand passing here. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so um, that's how I entered the um, cinema. It's, uh, I was taught to watch reality, to observe, to participate to reality while filming it. And that led me to cinema and documentary. So, um, so I'm Daniel Deji from Lebanon. Um, yeah, like Miriam, we work a lot to make a living and making our films that is um, quite difficult nowadays. Uh, I teach a lot. I uh, spend a lot of time with students. And I think that what, um, why I accepted to join the Sisters because they invited me to join the collective in uh, gen last January, I guess, uh, is because while teaching and the collective gave me the hope that we can make films differently. And me coming from um, visual anthropology is, was already in the field of anthropology, a way to think or uh, think anthropology and the world differently uh, um, by using new tools. So I, I thought maybe this collective, and I think uh, it, we will um, help us to recreate, I don't know, maybe recreate a, a way to make films and recreate the industry or non-industry. Maybe we really don't know need the, we really don't need the industry. So yeah, it's a, um, I think I'm there because it makes me dream. And I really enjoy yeah, working with the ladies that made their first film. I'm working on my first official film. So yeah. Mm -hmm. I have so many questions. Uh, <laughs> I'm thinking of so much listening to you. Um, but maybe I should start to ask you before I throw all my questions on you. Is there any moment in this uh, sisterhood, in this group, that has been special for you or open up something for you? Um, I, I will join Miriam when she used, uh, I knew Ellen, when you say solidarity and love, and especially that uh, now in Lebanon, we're facing something very difficult. Mm -hmm. And I mean, this, this is maybe very stupid because the world should know, but could you give a brief what's happening in Lebanon? And if you just, uh, the overview from having been a, a, a region that had war for many years, building your industry and, and start to build an industry and then have some crisis. Can you just give an overview for those who don't know about the situation in, in Lebanon? Yeah, and I will ask Miriam to help me. Okay. Um, I, I, the overview is, well, um, we had a, um, 
a blast on the August 4 that destroyed um, uh, half of the city of Beirut. Um, and in um, this part of the city is, um, well, there is a lot of people living there, but there is also all the um, cultural um, uh, people. So theaters, art house, uh, production houses, post-production houses, um, filmmakers, a lot of people, uh, uh, they lost everything in, in 10 minutes, in a few seconds. And um, so it was a bit uh, uh, difficult, uh, a bit very difficult, sorry, to, to understand what, what's happening. And maybe we just now, after three weeks, trying. Uh, I think yesterday when Miriam and Cecine were talking, uh, she, she explained. Oh, sorry for interrupting that, you, but we have an, it's in the lib library, we had a, a conversation with you and Miriam Sassin, if I. Does it, yeah, uh, but that was called Outlook Lebanon. So if someone would like to watch that, it's in the library. Please uh, continue. Miriam, can you, can you? You're on mute, Miriam. Yeah, yeah, Daniel. Explain a bit, help me to explain. What so, happened? Yeah, we yeah, don't but have I think you, <laughs> No, I think you said everything that left, like uh, we've, we've been, in fact, what's, um, it's also something you didn't um, say that we started in October having a revolution. So, uh, so in nine months, we went from a revolution with a lot of hope where everyone was, was on the street and with the uh, uh, adrenaline, how do we say it, like with a lot of hope. And then we went from this to today, uh, we have all our friends leaving the country because they, they lost their houses or they lost their work workplace. So this is a, um, a moment in history, I think, and we are wondering how people will ra raise again, you know, we don't know how they will be able to, to, to uh, go, go back on their feet, because the, the losses are, are huge. And a human, like in, uh, we, 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 there, there is more than 20, uh, 200 uh, dead persons and a lot of injuries and more and, 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 um, and, and people lost their houses and their workplaces and their uh, uh, in, uh, instruments if they are in filmmaking and they, their cameras and their computers. And this is a lot of, um, it's violence, you know. So, so the cinema industry is, uh, is hurt a lot also because it's a fragile industry and people are trying to make films and today they have to rebuild again. So we are... Uh, uh, waiting to see how how people will be able to raise in fact and to uh, to ri to rise so you know face to rise again and and to to rebuild again we don't know what, what do you do uh, in the middle of this sorry but, but uh, do you wanted to say something daniel yeah yes. I, I wanted to say that what is important and that's how i make the link with the with the sisters um is that um um what happened the the same night and next day that we were all helping each other mm -hmm. and and that we we are very creative in trying to find solutions and helping each other and i think that what that, that's what um makes the sisters in film our our sisterhood i mean the we're all sisters but it's that we we know that um um, everyone is there for each other and, and, and we can adapt and find solution and create together. Uh, and that's what happened in the streets in, in, of Beirut and even in the um, cinema field. I mean, um, uh, Fondation Liban Cinema uh, found a solution. Friends in Barcelona have uh, uh, Lebanese mm, restaurants. They, mm. they gathered and I say, we'll do screenings and, it will, and there will be a fee and we'll send the money to the filmmakers, you know. People are just trying to find solutions, and yeah. um, I think that yeah, that's yeah, yeah. The solidarity, solidarity was something well. huge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like you can find uh, uh, like all the filmmakers were gathered in the same production house to try and help and rebuild again. So the solidarity, uh, yeah, you're you're right, Daniel. This is the link with the sisters because we we uh, uh, like something was uh, taking shape very very quickly, and it's solidarity. It's a beautiful to hear, but it also reminds me about what Dina just expressed when you talk about your, when how you changed when you went into the refugee camp and you will never be the same again. And, and I think 
I don't know, somehow it's the, the quality that, that goes through. It's, it's, I'm so sorry, it's terrible what has happened because I know you had, I followed Lebanese friends on Facebook before with the economical crisis that increased and the pandemic and then this happened. So, so the challenges are too big to be true in, in a way. And, and, uh, but it's, it's lovely to hear that, that you are together. That's, uh, I also hope that we internationally can do something to also to, I know you, you have just joined Women in Film International, but I hope uh, that's really my vision that, that we should have each other when things happening and you do it in your scale. But I think that vibe, that's, that's what the industry needs. It's not only the needs when the shit hits the fan, it's the exactly. need. I think in the world to be there for each other. So, but then, then we come to to it was Erige. I also know when we met in Tunis that uh, you should you should tell us what you're doing as a filmmaker uh, because you you talked for the sisters. So, so uh, who are you in the film industry? Well, I started as a journalist and then I became a documentary filmmaker. Then I decided to open my production company, and now I'm uh, after after I made several documentaries now. I'm shooting my first uh, fiction film currently now. And um, and actually it, it wasn't, I wasn't supposed to shoot anything, but I, I felt the emergency uh, with COVID and all of that. And I was thinking, and we have this discussion with the sisters all the time. Are we going to wait for funders for two or three years to make our films? We are sometimes okay, but sometimes we, we feel like it's an emergency. We had these stories to tell. And, um, and we cannot wait so much sometimes. It depends. I mean, uh, good things comes with time, but also sometimes you just have to go for it. So my thoughts was how to produce differently, how to get together with solidarity and go to private funders or find another way of uh, making film, not just because of the financial part of it, but because of also the creative part of it. Myself, when I make a fiction film, and because I come from documentaries, and most of us, we come from documentaries, maybe because it was more accessible to us. But this also shaped us the way we have, the relationship we have with people, which means I don't have an idea and then I put actors into my film. I meet people that makes me want to make a film and I put them in my film, but rather it's a documentary or a fiction. Like currently I, I've met uh, women farmers. I've been in contact with them for a year now, discussion with them about their work and their daily work. And I really, when COVID happened, I really felt when I was talking to them that basically they were talking about life and they were saying like, life is worth nothing, but nothing is worth life. And this really made me want to make this film now. I didn't want to wait for that. So what I did is that I, I started to write my script. I decided that I, I would not bring actors into the film, that they will be playing their own role in the film. But I had to, of course, work with them for that. So we had to do a lot of repetition. And I was, I was explaining to funders, I have a project, I have a synopsis, I have all of this, but I don't have a scenario because the scenario is still ongoing, you know? And I could never write the dialogue the way they say it and the way they they, they leave it. And I didn't want to create the farm. I want to leave the farm. I didn't want to create the space. I wanted to leave it, to, to feel it. So, uh, so I, then I would find out that I would struggle a lot and I would wait a lot uh, to tell this story. So then I went to private founders, associations and um, um, family, <laughs> which is a lot of risk also by doing this. Uh, and somehow we end up doing the shooting and uh, the film is ongoing now. And we are, um, recently heard that Tunisia opened a new law, like uh, created a new law on crowdfunding. So we're like, okay, why not? Also this, you know, create kind of possibilities. Doesn't mean I will make films all the time this way because it's very, very difficult. And also you take a lot of risk by doing this. But at the same time, I feel so free to tell the story exactly the way I want to tell it and, and, and to spend the time with them the way I want to spend the time. I don't have a producer telling me what to do. I don't have funders also telling me that they want the angle to be more like this or more like that. And especially it's about women farmers. So they're expecting things about, about the story. And so, <clears throat> yeah, so I share that a lot, a bit, a bit with the sisters that I, they know that I'm very, very busy now, but I would love to support each other in this kind of um, 
ways of producing, you know. Is there any certain moment for you in this process during this little bit more than a year that has been special? So many special moments. I mean, when we met. When we were dancing in Tunis. Yes, when we were dancing, certainly, <laughs> yes. Uh, but uh, yes, all of them, I remember all of them. And we, this, it's such a, it's becoming a way of life. Like they are part of my life. I feel like the, the ladies. The, what, different like, does that make, what different does that make to your filmmaking? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's not about like, it's, it's, it makes a difference that I'm, I'm thinking about them. So then I'm thinking differently in a way. Also, I, I thought about this woman in the film and I said, oh my God, they're all related to a love story with a man. Why are they all related to a man? Why, why can't I have one of them that have nothing to do uh, in her arc, narrative arc with a man? So we've discussed this. So this changed the, um, me. It's, I'm, I'm questioning myself a bit more about women characters in my film. So uh, this changed a lot, but also having them, knowing that they are here for anything, really for even for personal uh, discussion. We have personal, we sometimes we call each other as friends and, and, and discuss things because it's all related. Our personal life is related to our, to our career and to our life uh, as a filmmaker. So, and also an uh, example, I, I remember also Kalfer when I, I told her I really need to work. <laughs> and she told me, you know, I have someone, a producer coming to Tunisia, you know, you might, he might, he might be able to, you know, he's, it's a TV show, maybe you can work on it. And I, I ended up working on it. And this helped me also prepare my film, develop my film. So also it's about, you know, giving us, you know, tools and, and, and contacts to, to get some jobs sometimes. Anything is, is a good memory for me. That's and also you know, what I, I really want to say also is that usually in the industry, when you go into your network and you ask for help from another producer or for any, anybody, of course, they're expecting something from you back. And this, but we the, don't feel it with each other. It's so funny that you say, because I just get the need to, to, to share a memory I have. So, so if I might do that, because I used to be a person that I don't like groups. I'm not a feminist. I, I'm, I'm my own. I'm a tough girl. I can do it myself. And then I was invited to a network. And then I found out, wow, I like this. I, I found out things about myself that I didn't know, because I, I always take a, a big responsibility. And in this group, I realized that I became so... Oh my God, I'm in a group where people really share responsibilities. So I, I, I loved what happened in my body. But then someone gave something to me. And I remember, oh, okay, what do you want back from me? And then, so I had to ask, do you want to, no, 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 I'm happy to give it to you. And that changed my life. And I think I used to, so I'm happy to hear you saying that because I used to say when in with circumstances that, to dare to ask for help, but also to dare to give things uh, uh, away if you have it. If you need something I have, to dare to give it to you, but also to dare to ask. I think for me that's the, and maybe that is solidarity, I don't know, because if I give it to you, then you will give it to someone else. And, and so to say, the circular economy in a way, it, it's, you know, I, I, I truly believe in that. And I would like to, to, to finish, we're almost running out of time to ask you if it's okay with you, if you would like to share what you need and what you can contribute with in this network. Um, Your... Uh... What we need. <laughs> what you need, you can take it on a big scale or in a small scale, but uh, as you find a level that works for you. But I, I, I think it's always interesting to hear. And also because sometimes it's really difficult to say what you can contribute with, that you have, that you are rich. So. Well, I think, I think, I don't know if they agree with me, ladies, but also I think it's really interesting that uh, uh, we invest on people more. Oh, oh, excuse me, I didn't hear. I think that this is, this is very important uh, that we invest on people, on women, yeah. and on women filmmakers. So I don't know in which way exactly, but this just to, to be aware that it's really important to invest in, in them because this is just going to be not just about one person, it's going to spread to many, many other levels in our countries with other women here, with the society, with. I mean, it has a, it's a huge impact in, in this. That's the big picture. I'm not going to be mean to you because I'm really curious. What do you need, Richard? 
me personally yeah i mean uh i mean now right now i need people to <laughs> to uh to invest in my project you know that's what i need i need to people to invest and also we are down to earth we know that also the project we are making they are it's art of course but it's also it has an audience and it has a real audience so we're not talking we're not asking people to like in a way that oh please you know we're just saying you know what we are doing this and this is great and we showed you already that we can do it because we did it on our first time so please just you know <laughs> so i don't know for, for myself yeah, I, I, I got it i got it so what can you what can you bring to the to the world to the industry what's your new voices i mean new completely new voices and and and, and uh, um and in, in Tunisia, for example, the film I'm doing right now with this woman, it's it's tough because because they are they are not actors, and because some of the scenes in the film are sensitive in terms of men and women relationship, or in terms of uh, um, uh, uh, working classes, let's say. Yeah. I know that I'm, they might have trouble in their life after the film, so I have to think more than just a film. What we're doing is more than a film. That's I think what we need. Uh, it's Understand it. It's people to understand that it's more than a film, and when they invest in our films, they don't invest just in a film, in a movie. Yeah. In a whole I thing. Hear yeah. That they invest in the future, and if you listen to Heather Ray, who spoke at Carla yesterday, she she talked about the dynamics between uh, story, power, and the future, and that's what I hear. So, Dina, what do you need, and what could you bring to the world? Well, I will speak a little bit, not only Dina now, according to our situation in the collective, uh, let's say, we are trying to establish ourselves and we are trying to reach out to uh, a bigger network, to key people, to present ourselves and connect, to be able to receive some support and recognition and create a debate where we can share our knowledge and experience and opinion about what's happening. Um, and represent uh, what is also happening in each one of us country because it's a different situation as well but we all share the same a lot of similarity and a lot of challenges are uh, common between us so now it's time to try to um, gain more visibility uh, be present uh, be connected more uh, try to move forward so we can as well not proceed as a collective but also proceed as uh, filmmakers who wants to make films at the moment that's interesting because when you when you give the answers and then i'm saying are you, are you talking about what you can bring or what you need or is that the same in this case because i think you you need to get visibility and to bring out this message. And is that a need or something you contribute with? I think, because as it's I think, same. it's both, isn't it? Exactly, it's exchange. Yeah. It's both. That's cool. Yeah. Yes, this is what how I believe it's exchange that what you give and also what you receive. It's uh, this is the the dynamic that should be. It's not about only taking or receiving. Mm -hmm. It's the exchange, the dynamics that you create between you and your colleagues or organization or an institute it's the exchange that we want to have mm -hmm. we know that this industry is very rough and, and tough and brutal and can be corrupted and we are looking for so many alternative ways to make films away from these methods in a way that we can help each ourselves and help others so this kind of exchange that is something that we want to bring up to the table um this kind of mentality um, Thank you so much, Dina. it's very beautiful and, and personally personally uh, i want to keep doing films i'm always struggling to find ways to make films and i know that's the only thing that i want to do in my life and uh, and there's a lot of struggles along the way and i don't want to fall and stop i want to fall and stand up and keep going so and if you fall, you have your sisters there. <laughs> exactly, I have the back to lean on. And that's the, that's the beauty of it, absolutely. Thank you, darling. Danielle, so what would you say? Um, I think today, um, <laughs> if, yeah, if we, yeah, I will need to, people to let me think and give me freedom to think and elevate myself. I think I'll, because Iris and Dina said a lot, and I think what we need is yeah to to 
to feel that we exist and we are and hopefully we have freedom to 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 be here i don't know something like that i'm yeah yeah and uh, i second dina and, and erish for <laughs> did we lose erish now uh hmm. no, she's she's still here okay she's still here yeah no, yeah, yeah. okay now that was uh, your need and that's also beautiful you need your space to think and to have your freedom uh, so what can you contribute with <laughs> all my love <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's fantastic but i must say it's so I was so happy to be with you and, uh, when I met you in, in Tunisia, uh, but I'm happy to be with you now as well, because I think you open up a lot of windows in my mind, listening to you. Um, Miriam. Um, like I, I will second all what uh, th these beautiful women were like they were saying. I think that today, personally, I'm very tired, like tired of having a lot of fights to like cinema and all what you are doing shouldn't be like this. Like we shouldn't be fighting all the day, like every day, you know? And I think we have a lot of fights because we live in countries that we have to fight to exist. And we live in countries with instability all the time and economic problems and wars and I don't know what. And we have to fight to do films because men were, were existing before us and we're doing films and now we are starting, like, the light is a little bit on women, but not enough. And uh, we are fighting because also we are in an in, in industry that is very, um, that is, is very um, not tolerant at all, you know. And what I need today is tolerance and, uh, and freedom. Like, we have and we should be able to do our films and enjoy it. We cannot be fighting all the time. It's a lot to handle. For what? Why? You know, I'm asking myself every day today, ever since the explosion, why, what I'm, why I'm doing this, you know? Why I'm fighting a lot? Why do I have to be fighting a lot like a saint? I'm not a saint, you know? I'm not, I don't want to be a martyr. I don't want to be. So what is the purpose of, we are not enjoying anymore. And this is a problem if you are not enjoying anymore. So I need to enjoy again things. And I think that I don't, uh, I know today that I don't want to belong to this industry anymore. I want to create something else because this industry after the COVID and after what we are being living like in Lebanon and, and in other countries as well, it's the end of something also like we should invent something else. Like it's also the end of capitalism, but it's also the end of our industry in this way. So yeah. I think we should invent something else and we, amongst the sisters we're, were thinking of something like this because we felt it. We felt a year ago and two years ago, like when we started to meet, that this, is, this was the end of an industry and we have to think of something else. We cannot continue to be in this competition because there is a lot of filmmakers and uh, not a lot of funds. And we are, and this creates something not very uh, loving, you know, amongst filmmakers. And this is what, like, you don't want this. So it's time to create something else, I think. And we will be doing it in, in this collective. Now I got that feeling again that I got when, when Dina spoke, that because I, okay, ask you what you can contribute with or what you need. And then somehow this idea is also a contribution at the same time as it is. Exactly. And that is, of course, and I, I have, I have the privilege, and just being re-elected, by the way, so I'll be the president for two more years for WIFTI, so I have two years to work hard now to, to make change, and I hope we can do it together. But I also would like to ask you, what could an organization like Women in Film International and the international community do for you in your region? Who do you want us to be for you? That could help me in my work. Would you like to share that before we close this? circle i think if i'm if i if i'll start uh, i think that uh, being together is uh, is is already something like knowing that you are also here to think together because we should start thinking together of solutions you know we cannot uh, just um, bear the consequences of what the industry is suggesting to us we cannot continue like this so we should start 
thinking of how to help each other as women filmmakers and help others. Because when I think of others coming their way to like, I, I, I teach at a new university and I'm, I'm starting to see my students like uh, uh, old students coming to this industry and suffering what I suffered, you know? And it, uh, I, it's, I don't want it to happen like this. Like we cannot continue to teach cinema at school and tell them that cinema is uh, very nice and very romantic and dreamy and, and reality on them and no. then reality and I'm af afraid for them to go into re real life you know because real life is very different and it shouldn't be like this why we should suffer a lot like this by being a woman and by being in this country and Arab countries and also in this industry it's too much to handle so being with you I think with we with with I, th I think that what we should uh, it's like brainstorming also think with that. your experience yeah, no, but I think the background for Carla 2020 has been a think tank that has been European networks yeah. and Canadian network, but we just sat down together and so what do we we need? But I think this now we have the muscles to 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 look at the bigger need. And I think uh, yeah, that's what you're saying. Would you, the rest of you like to add something? You now we have only a couple of minutes left, so I just want to add that you know during uh, during COVID we we both uh, saw a lot of. Um, uh, supporting fund uh, funds or things like that for artists and and so on but we are never in um, we are never quite in the in the box that they are talking about we're never in in any box mm. so, which make us or always feel and but also this make us stronger that we are in any box like we don't we, we, we don't belong to you know you have all, all these documents and they are asking if you want to get the fund you have to get this 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 and you have to do this this that but we're not in there exactly so so that's also make us uh, create the, this own box for us where we can support each other in our own yeah, yeah. in our own reality um, so that's also we thought about uh, different ways um, um, so you mean it's also freedom. It, it's of course it, it's to suffer, not to have the support, but it is also freedom, and to use that freedom to create a box that fulfills the real needs. That's what I hear. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So, so Dina and Danielle, you would like to throw in something before we say goodbye, or of Vida's in? I won't <laughs> say a box. I would say landscape, Irish. <laughs> Landscaping, yeah. Yeah, so, sorry for the, the word. <laughs> yeah, no, but please, please. You understand me. <laughs> knowledge on us, we want that. Why, why landscape? What, what do you see? Um, no, it's just because boxes, I, uh, I won't stand being, uh, yeah. No. I think no one wants to be in a box. No, no, that's what I'm saying. Daniel, je voulais dire, on coche pas les cases à chaque fois. Yeah, 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 I got you, I got you. It was just to play. I didn't got you because I don't speak French, but I hope you kind of what you said behind my back. <laughs> no, it's a joke. Uh, landscape, think tank, and, and uh, create new possibilities. Dina, last word. No, I think, uh, I think how we can collaborate and how you can help, as you said, the fact that we are filmmakers, we are storytellers, we have a strong uh, point of view and we have a strong card. We're not like, we can be um, creating organization. We're not an uh, administration people, how you say it? We, we are a landscape, not a box. That exactly, would exactly. And the fact that we come from a, a landscape, a tough landscape that has a very limited opportunities and, and uh, censorship and so on it's important that we all help each other and we receive the hand that can take us uh, can free us a little bit from all these uh, restrictions around us so for sure collaborating with WIFT or, or or any organization will help us uh, to, post, to put us on the map and open doors for us because it's now this is what we need opportunities and support and love and uh, if there's always um, ways to make this happen, we will definitely reach out and definitely try to connect and try to present. So maybe that's one of the ways that we can collaborate and help each other, at least to put us on the map and uh, open doors for us. I think it was so good that I dragged Regina in because I wanted to introduce you. Some of you have met Regina who works with me in WIFT and, and we are so lucky to have Regina now working with WIFT for the next coming years to, with communication and membership and also to, to help us to, 
to make each other visible. So I really hope we can do practical things. Thank you very much for this conversation. I love you even more if it was possible. You will always be my lioness of the Middle East because I see so much potential, so much power. I can see the problem and, and the crisis you have, but I also see these strong spirits. And thank you for doing this. I love you so much. Thank you for inviting us. Thank you. Thank you, Regina. <laughs> Have a nice day. You too.